Hi guys. Hail and Mary meets everybody. It's Michelle Marie Delaney. This is not a live show. It could be, but I chose not to uh, make it a live show because it is early Sunday morning or Monday morning. It is uh, currently twelve fifteen a.m. and Monday. We all know that most of my audience are asleep. Okay, and that's one reason why why have a night show. No one's gonna be awake. Um. I didn't do a damn thing Sunday. I slept in all of the day. I got up. I was waiting for the, the tarot card reading to get finish uploading so I could shut the computer off, which I shut the computer off. And I went to sleep for about, about 9 o'clock, woke up about uh, 2.30 in the afternoon, took a bath. Then after I took a bath, I started washing some of my socks. And then, um, went back to bed again. Occasionally watched a few videos here and there. And then I realized that, um, this would have been a perfect time to talk about things, including some people that, that they had a hard time understanding what the tarot card reading was saying. It's not that hard to understand, guys. The saying is, is that, you know, you have the ability to decide if you if you love your science and technology. In that case, your world is going to remain the same. It's not going to change. Or you want to take that chance to go to places and explore your futures. Nothing wrong with that at all. Exploring new futures is exactly what we have to do. Um... Right now, I'm not sure how to make that happen because there's so many questions I don't know, okay? Um, first of all, let's talk about um, a little bit of people who don't know I get reverse effect, seasonal affective disorder, or, or SAD. Um, reverse seasonal affective disorder is not like... Um, easy to explain. A lot of people get seasonal affective disorder in the winter time, um, but in the summertime, it's just not a common thing. Technically, it's not even summer yet. Okay, that isn't until the twenty-first of June. Okay. Um, what happens normally, uh, especially during a hot summer, is all of a sudden. You know, we're, because I cannot handle excessive heat, I will be basically um, cocoon in a house with the air conditioner running in one room um, during the peak of the day, trying to keep my body temperature with a safe, within a safe temperature um, so that I'll go, I don't get heat stroke. And... Uh, that's where the air conditioning comes in. But we already know with all the lockdowns and all the other crap that's already happened in the last few years that even I don't look forward to going through this again. I don't want to be locked in a room, you know, depending on an air conditioner to keep my body temperature under 99 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, in the summer, my body temperature goes, goes pretty high. Well, actually, no, actually it doesn't go really, really high, but in the wintertime, it definitely compensates for the cold, which I will, whatever happens is because of the way I'm built, that there's, um, there's not a lot of way for the excessive heat to be removed from the body. So during the summertime, um, when things get too warm, I have to go cool down. I have to go where it's cold. Okay. Uh, in the winter time, because my body temperature can 
elevate quite a bit, up into about 99.7. And that's not a fever, honey. That's that's actually that's actually pretty close to my normal temperature in the summertime. And the wintertime is, 90, is 99 to 99.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I am able to walk around without any heavy jacket, any heavy gloves, uh, any heavy winter gear at all in a normal New England type weather. Um, you see me walking around in dresses and skirts. is because I can do that because my body um, makes enough extra radiant heat that it can actually um, make warm up the air around me so that I don't have get chills. Now, of course, that does get different when you have the wind. The wind, of course, blows um, any kind of heat barrier away and I can get chilled. And then in that case, my body will do is it ramps up the heat production even more to compensate for the wind blowing. But if the wind's blowing hard enough, my body still can't do it. And then it starts to do what everybody else's body does with hypothermia. Um, but hypothermia right now in the summertime is the least of my problem. It's hyper. Thermia. It's uh, when your body is really overheating and you can't get rid of enough of the heat. You can't dump it. Um, you are, um, one of the reasons is that I am a very uh, heavy person, and that's one reason why, is that my body can't dump the heat because it doesn't have um, enough radiators on me to. Um, you might say, well, gee, you got a whole, you got big, you got a lot of skin flaps. Can't you skin flaps take some heat out? Yes, they can. But the problem is, is that, um, um, my body produces so much extra energy. It may seem like I don't produce a lot of energy, but I do. Um, so the, there is considerations that need to be done, uh, in the summertime. To keep cool. When I was a kid, how we kept cool um, would be is to go into a swimming pool or into the lake. Um, I don't have access to an easily walking bull distance for a swimming pool or a lake. And so there is no easy way to remove that excessive heat buildup. Okay? It's just, there's just nothing there. Okay? However, the local paratransit man had said that if you were to go to Highland Lake, they will take you to Highland Lake. And as long as you um, get back or want to get home before the uh, the van stops running, which would be about 2 o'clock for the lockdowns and other crap. So in other words, you could go, you could get, um, you had a bathing suit. You could go swimming, say, you know, say around 11 o'clock, and you could go swimming for three hours at Risha Beach, and then you could just go to paratransit man and say, hey, um, I'm done swimming right now. Um, I need to ride home. Because you want to make sure your bum is dry. You don't want to go get in the van soaking wet. Um, because I wear a skirt, it's very easy for me to actually be pre-dressed. So all I have to do is just take off my skirt and top, and I can have my my, my swimsuit underneath, um, which is well, usually I buy a one piece. But uh, that's another thing I gotta get is one piece suit, okay. And uh, of course, that was before the knee injury. We have not tried swimming with this knee injury. We have no idea how I would be able to swim with a knee injury. If I'm lucky, I might be able to swim. If not, I could be seriously out of, you know, out of trouble. You know, in trouble. Um, so we don't know about swimming now with this knee injury. I have a lot of strength in my upper body and my upper arms, so I can actually crawl through the water still. Even with two dud legs, in fact, even as a kid, I tended to use my arms for a lot of the motion. Um, but, you know, it still is a lot of uh, work to prepare for going swimming. So, but, uh, you know, 
this so far this year has not been very warm. It's actually been very cold, or very cool. However, this today is going to be start of a three-day marathon at 27 degrees Celsius temperatures. So, um, that's that's something we need to keep an eye on because you know 27 degrees Celsius three days uh, means that I need to watch out, make sure my body temperature doesn't go very high above 34 degrees Celsius. If it does, then obviously I'm in trouble. So obviously, um, during the summers, that's why you don't do a lot. But I do want to go order some food from Instacart and things like that today, too, because the fact is there's a few things I need for the house. And like quite a few prepper organizations have said is you need to stock up. You need to stock up on food. You need to stick up on stock up on non perishables. You need to stock up on yet at the same time I'm also trying to watch my weight. Um having you know cabbage food be uh, dried beans, rice, pastas, dehydrated milk, vegetables, canned food. Yeah, that does make a difference. And uh, I think that that's important to keep in mind. Uh, but part of me, as I was saying, is probably because it's a depression, is what's the point? Um, we have reached a point where in the last three or four years that the American people have, feeling, have begun to feel broken. And what I mean by broken is that their whole world um, prior to um, we felt this way also prior a little bit prior to um, the events of two you know 2016 as well but it really is much more worse after 2020 okay uh, we feel broken because of the fact that uh, our our political leaders are not doing what they're supposed to do. They're not working for the American people's best interest. Um, they are not coming up with a solid, cohesive plan to deal with uh, the situations with the high energy crisis, the shipping debacles, the um, the uh, shortage of supplies. In fact, even uh, Joe Biden had the nerve to say, "It's for your own good." Excuse me, Mr. President. You are out of touch. It is not for our own good. The American people's lives depend on trucks and ma and trains and personal automobiles to get things done. This is not a European country where a very densely packed city center where people can go ahead and walk place to place. This is an environment of the United States where things are further out and people have to drive or take mass transit or take the train to go to where they have to go. And that's costing us money. Getting supplies to the American consumer is becoming expensive. Getting supplies from the different seaports to the warehouses in America is becoming expensive. Okay. Part of the reason is diesel fuel. The fact is that the trucking industry runs on diesel. The same is also true with farmers and the farming equipment. It also runs in diesel. Thus, the price of food is going up a lot in the store. Okay? It's not cheap anymore. You have to pay a lot of money to get produce. It's costing the farmers a lot of money for the seeds and fertilizers that they need. And for livestock, the, the feed, to feed the animals, it's costing them money. 
So yes, this is an issue. Yes, it is affecting uh, a large majority of people. In addition to that, a good portion of America does not want anything to do whatsoever with getting into the conflict in the Ukraine. One of the reasons is, is that we realize it's over 3,000, 4,000 miles away, and it's not something that is going to be affecting us here in the homeland. But we are concerned what raising tensions in China and in Russia because we know that in case of China, all they have to do is say is no more goods to the United States. They don't deserve anything. No ships to America. Oh, what about all the ships that are already there in the wet route that are locked up outside of the ports of Los Angeles? And they're still there. They didn't go away. Well, then we recall those ships too. We have gone to a society as is totally weird. The fact is that we have a lot of food on some of those ships. Clearly, a lot of that produce that hasn't been managed to reach the stores has gone bad in those refrigerated um, containers. Okay? Keep in mind that those containers, some of them have been out to sea for months. They haven't even been on shore. We don't know if the food is even any good in them, despite the refrigeration. Um, we also, of course, know that there are other containers that are out parked outside of the ports of Los Angeles that have not been successfully shipped to the warehouses because there's a shortage of drivers. And the reason there's a shortage of drivers is that the drivers are realizing that to move these containers, they have to pay for their own diesel. Diesel is almost up to $6 a gallon, guys. You're talking just to make a single delivery that the driver has to figure out the cost of his fuel in his quote that he gives to the company that he wants to ship a product. So he has to figure out how many gallons of diesel he's going to need to get the product from the, com the company warehouse to the other company warehouse distribution point, whatever. That they don't want to take on these huge expenses. A lot of truckers have decided that because the market has not be has become so, you know, hostile and, and not com and not economically feasible to drive, a lot of truckers have mothballed the trucks and basically are looking for work from other sources. Thus, the driver shortage. Some drivers, of course are still doing the driving, but they're demanding higher rates, which they certainly should. But some companies are saying, I don't want to pay that. I don't want to pay your higher rates. And the worst ones are the ones when the companies that the truckers work for have contracts. The contracts that were signed, say, for a year ago, when the cost of diesel was cheaper. Those companies now are realizing they have to renegotiate, but the problem is they can't, okay? Or even if there is a renegotiatory clause, doesn't mean that the, uh, the company that hired the company um, is going to agree to the new terms. So, again, the drivers could be out of jobs. The... Next biggest thing is that I don't know about you, but 
There's just the emotional malaise that is out there. It is very noticeable. People are, ups- are uncomfortable. People are ang- anxiety is on the rise. You got people looking at the cost of things in the store, the food shortages, the supply shortages. And then they're looking at the stupid president of the United States smirking and acting like everything's okay. No wonder why Americans are so upset. And of course, the Congress is not doing any better. Democrats are trying to push legislation and yet the sad truth is they can't even agree what color to paint, you know, you know, a single table. I wouldn't never I hate to see what they would say. Well what color should we paint the men and women's bathrooms in the Capitol? Who the hell cares what color I paint the bathrooms, for example? I wouldn't care. Why don't you just do it uh, Rolling Stone says I'm painted black? Of course, you need a lot of light LED, I mean, a lot of bright LED lights to make up for that, but um, that's not what the American people are worried about, Congress. Green energy initiatives. Not going to work too soon at this point to be practical. You know, that takes planning. What are we doing to plan for the Green Energy Initiative? Not a bloody thing. Joe Biden wants to rush green energy initiative into the hands of people before 2024. Democrats feel that they are going to seriously lose everything by 2022, which is the midterms, which may very well be the case. The midterms are really not going to go well for the Democrats. Just like Jimmy Buffett said, it's my own damn fault because the fact is that they have not been focusing on the needs and the concerns of the constituents. If you can't focus on the needs of the people that put you in power, you're not going to be in power very long. Okay? That's a fact check. You're not going to be in power very long. You need to come up with a plan and you need to come up with a solid plan. Now, I have one last pair of ears left for those of you who wanted to know. These are the last of the ears from Dimitri in existence. Last set. Thanks in part to Putin and Biden, there will not be more ears. As Dimitri told me, he says he doesn't even know if his if his shop is still intact. Think about that. He doesn't know if his shop is intact. <sighs> what a mess. What a mess. Well... Let me just tell you that I am actually looking forward to saying something new come up. And I do hope that somebody in Congress is going to come to grips with what's really going on. I know Elizabeth Warren has said, guys, we're running out of time to 
come up with a stimulus bill. Because 2022 midterms is coming. What has happened to that? Nothing. Nothing at all. No changes. Just business as usual. Screw America. Screw the world. Who cares? Remember this, guys. Something happened similar happened in um, has happened in other countries. And the citizens of those countries decided that the government government had to change. A revolution starts. The same thing happened with the American Revolution. We we rebelled against England. Why? Same thing. The House of Parliament didn't want to do anything. House of Commons, House of Lords did not want to work with the colonists. They came up with this thing such as raising taxes like they conveniently, inconveniently forgot they existed. Oh! What about those people in America? Gee, we're not even, they're not even paying anything to the crown. Oh, gee, so we got to make sure now they pay. And so those people in America were pretty much self-autonomous. And were loyal to the British Empire. It's this stupid bullshit of the Boston, um, not just Boston, um, the Boston Tea Harbor was the event, but there was other taxing up that was going up, requiring imports from England, including things like China, glass, and um, other materials. Whereas instead, the colonists were making a lot of stuff here. So the boomerang of shipping it to uh, England, and then shipping it back with a boat here, and then having the crown out of tax on it was just a bit too much. And so, just like with the Boston Tea, Sorry, screw you. We don't want to deal with this garbage. Can you blame them? Of course not. But we have the power of the of the ballots on the nineteen on November twenty second. I'm sorry, of two thousand twenty two. I think it's the first Tuesday of the month of November. We're going to have the ability to make a very clear statement what we want and we don't want. And like Elizabeth Warren said, we don't have any time. We're out of time. She's right. You are. Now, as far as the energy crisis that's coming up because of the fact is that all the the drought-stricken lands, including where Lake Mead Reservoir is, how that feeds the Hoover Dam, and after Hoover Dam is now has doesn't have enough water for the intakes, and that Hoover Dam may be forced to shut down. Um, that's a really serious issue right there. However, I'm susp- I suppose that the uh, Hoover Dam is going to take advantage of this time to inspect everything to make sure that there is no, um, you know, cracks or damage done to the turbines or anything so that when they finally can get enough water, they can start generating electricity again. There's a few other dams in that area that are going to be affected as well. Under the Biden administration, a lot of fossil fuel plants were shut down. A lot of them were shut down also because they were older plants. They were hoping with the green energy initiatives that they weren't going to need them. Well, unfortunately enough, that's not the case. With the fact is that, well, it's certainly still shining, and the wind is still blowing, the wind turbines 
or don't produce the energy density needed to keep everything running during major, you know, 30, 40, 50 degree days. Okay, we're talking about Celsius here. Across the entire West to Midwest. I don't mind all the electric cars because people are saying, well, I'll leave my cast guzzler in the garage and just drive the electric Prius, which would make sense for some things. But the sad truth is, there's not going to be enough electricity to charge all those cars because there's not enough generating capacity. A large portion of the electrical energy is going to be falling pretty much on the east, on the New England states, the east coast. How are we going to get all that energy generated to supply a whole nation in the summer, nonetheless? There's a lot of things like this that just shows me that somebody is not aware what really is going on? And so I implore everybody to please look into what I'm saying. Because it's true. Well, anyway, I got a 10 o'clock show today too, don't I? Yeah, I do. So, I'm going to let you guys go. Think about what I said, because it's a good point. Yeah, I'll try to see if we get the year sound for tomorrow, today too. All right? See you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.